Hi, in this video here we're going to look at the nature of GIS attribute data. The true power of GIS is to link points, lines, and polygons with attribute data. Typically attribute data is stored in something like Excel or Access, and we have proprietary formats or DBF files in which we store attribute data. If you've taken statistics or some other data management class before, we've all probably worked with attribute data where you can sort or you can query or you can create filters here. The true power of GIS is to link each of these records to a geographic object like a point, line, or polygon which is shown in real world geographic space here. So you can see right here we're looking at the triangle region right here where we have Durham, we have Wake County, Orange County, and we have some of the lines and the polygons which compose it here. Now in order to look at the attribute table which composes the counties for example right here I can right mouse click and I can look at the attribute data here this is what we call a context menu and we can go through and open up the attribute data now in the talks in the book in chapter 1 and chapter 2 talks a lot about the nature of data we have a few different types of data we have nominal data so like our data name our county name or our state name or our FIPS code we're basically we can't say dare is greater than Avery is greater than something else. Populations, we can compare populations or average ages or something like that. But we can't just say one is greater than the other. Some of the things that we can do right here, we can sort ascending, sort descending. But if you go down here, you can see the statistics is going to be disabled because I can't do a mean or a median or a mode or anything like that with this. Even the same thing with FIPS right here. I can't perform statistics right here because it's stored as text data here. And when I go down to my properties right here, it'll tell me it's stored as a string. Another way that I can tell is when I look at the columns right here and the things that read down are called columns, or columns or fields or attributes versus records which read across, you can see that they're justified to the left. Typically numbers are going to be justified to the right strings are going to be justified to the left and you can see it told me that something like name right here and properties it's a string and it has a length of 32 which means we store 32 characters with it if I go to pop 2003 and look at the properties of that you can see it's a long long meaning a long integer or even if I go over to something with a decimal point say median age or something like that I can go to the properties and this is stored as a double meaning as double precision that means that I want to have decimal points with when I look at raw population values, I'm not going to have half a person, so there's no need for precision, that level of precision, rather. So we have our nominal data right here, but we also have interval, ratio, and ordinal data. Typically, ratio data is going to be data with an absolute zero, something like population. So if I say the POP 2003 is 32,000, that's going to be twice as much as it is if something were 16,000. So I can make those com ratio comparisons. I can't do so with something like interval data, which doesn't have an absolute zero. Something like uh, degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, it can go below zero. So I can't really make those comparisons right here. So this is my attribute table here for the counties in North Carolina. In the bottom left right here, we can see that 0 out of 100 are selected right here. So basically, that means that there's 100 counties or 100 records in this particular file right here. I can go through and sort right these. So if I went, were to go through and look at, click on Durham County right here, you can see it's highlighted here. And now it's also highlighted in the map right here. And then to unselect it, I can click Clear Selection right here. I can grab a bunch of counties right here, and those will be highlighted in the map if they're within my view, and I can zoom out and zoom in all those things. Okay. If I go through and look at, say, my urban areas right here, it's got the same thing here. I have the same attribute table. It doesn't have as many things here. It doesn't have as many uh, fields right here, but a lot more records because I'm looking at a number of different urban areas throughout the entire United States. But it has a lot of the same data here. Another way that I can access my attribute data is using the Identify button. And this, is, this can be found in one of your main toolbars right here. So I've got the little I button, and then you can see the I icon right there. So I can click on a feature right there, and you can see I've highlighted the Durban, Ur Dur uh, Durham urbanized area right there, and it tells me the population in 2000, the number of square miles, the shape that it's in, it's a polygon, the number of housing units. I can click on it for Wake County here. 
And for Wake County right uh, in Raleigh right here, it's got the population, the number of households, the number of housing units. Here's another one over here in Johnston County, which is the name is Clayton. This is the way we divide up these urban areas according to ESRI and probably the Department of Commerce, which runs a lot of the census. Another way I can click on this interstate right here through Gl Glanville County. So you can see this is called I-85. It's a class meaning it's an interstate. The number is 85. And it's got a distance of 618 miles right here. Mm -hmm. I can move over here. Now I can click on this kind of north-south running freeway here. This is Route 95 here and it runs for about 1,827 miles from Maine all the way down to Florida here. So I can access these two different ways using the identify button or I can actually open up my attribute table.